We are all concerned about global warming. Forest health is an integrated and important part of global warming solutions. If we manage, we have more of a chance to make a difference than if we leave it alone. The single largest source of greenhouse gases today is from wildfires and insect infestations putting CO2 into the atmosphere. This is an issue that affects every person in America. One of the things I teach the kids is to see the forest through a forester's eyes. This round measures four and a half inches across. This round measures 12 inches across. This one, 30 inches. So I ask the kids, which is the youngest tree? The answer, the one that's 30 inches across. Because this is the round that came from the tree that was growing in a healthy, well-managed forest. And what I see now is a, uh, a forest throughout North America, and especially in the United States, uh, that have deteriorated because of neglect. On the 191 million acres of national forest land, 74% uh, of those acres are in a serious fire condition. When I look at the, uh, the difference between how experts view the forest and how the public views the forest, one thing that I see is that the public thinks that the best thing we can do for forests is do nothing. What we've done over the last hundred years, though, is we've put out fires in forests, and this has caused forests to change. People look at it and they think it's natural now, and they don't necessarily understand that by suppressing fire, we've gotten it to a state where it's overstocked with unhealthy trees. That's really not a natural condition. A forest that, that once had perhaps 50 to 75 trees per acre now has thousands of trees per acre. Forests are too dense and are therefore really subject to catastrophic fires. We have now what we call fuel ladders. Uh, all these small trees that came in after fire suppression and haven't grown very much now are able to wick the fire from the surface fuels up into the crowns of the overstory trees. It's not a question of if this forest will burn, but it's a question of when. And when it does, it will burn out the entire watershed. I know that we can avert some of this tree mortality through good forest management practices. No one wants to see over large expenses catastrophic fire loss like you see here. Few people realize that when you have a wildfire, it's not just the smoke that uh, is actually polluting the atmosphere with CO2. That's actually only about one quarter of the emissions. The other three quarters of the emissions are the decay of the fire killed trees. The same thing is true when you have an insect infestation. The number one cause for bark beetle outbreaks uh, has to do with uh, tree density, too many trees on the landscape, and droughty conditions. If you're carrying more wood in the forest than your soils can support, you end up with a more stressed system. And a tree under stress is much more likely to be successfully attacked by insects. What this does is not only directly kill the trees, but it also provides more dead fuels so that at least in the first few years after one of these attacks, uh, wildfire risk is going to be uh, much higher. So it really doesn't matter whether it's a wildfire or an insect infestation. The net effect on global warming is the same. Forests are part of the lungs of the earth. What we want to do is to make sure that they still have that ability to store carbon in the future. Forests can be an ally in the fight against global warming. If we're, if we're managing them correctly. By thinning the trees out, giving them enough crown space and root space, you can make the individual trees healthier. Thinning a forest actually improves the forest health. In fact, among other things, it makes it much more resistant to climate change. It also makes it much more resistant to forest fires. So you take the fire risk out, you make them healthier, and boom, you've got forest for the next century. One of the most important things we can do is when we have fire damaged landscapes such as what you see behind me, our best management action is to get those areas growing trees again. If this burns, the wood in there is still fixing carbon. If you take that and turn it into furniture or a house, that carbon is still fixed. About half the weight of wood is carbon. Um, so if you think about any item of furniture in your house, for example, a heavy wooden table, half the weight of that is carbon that's stored as long as that table exists. If you manage the forest by removing the dead trees, putting the wood into wood products, planting a new forest, 
within less than a century, all the carbon dioxide that was lost in the fire can be captured again. We've seen conflict uh, rattle around our forest issues for decades in California and across Northern America. We finally have an opportunity to set aside that conflict and bring consensus from the environmental groups, from our communities, and from our forest practitioners all together. The time for indecision and conflict has passed. We need to be doing everything we can, as rapidly as we can, to bring about a different future. We all want healthy, productive forests for all the values that they provide in terms of filtering water, in terms of sequestering carbon, providing habitat for animals. We all are in favor of that. There's a lot of work to be done. We're all responsible for the, the forest and, and managing it. We can do more to, to improve the forest health, to make sure we're, we're, we're taking carbon out of the atmosphere, and we're taking care of this forest for our kids and their kids and their kids. We can make a difference. We know how to make a difference. Perhaps the picture behind me might begin to get us to rethink what we should be doing for our forests.